Jan Werner stood inside a closet, tripping on LSD. A kitten purred outside the door. A young woman, sitting cross-legged, stroked the kitten and smiled mystically. It was the spring of 1965, and Denise Kaufman, a dark-haired free spirit who played blues harmonica and wore tall velvet boots, had met Wenner a few hours before while sitting with friends at the Terrace, the outdoor cafe on the campus of the University of California at Berkeley. The sit-ins and protests of the free speech movement, which pitted students against the university's administration over civil rights and the First Amendment, had focused the nation's attention on Berkeley in the preceding months and now dominated the talk. They all seemed to think they were making history, destinies colliding in nearby apartments and along Telegraph Avenue over joints and copies of Joseph Heller's Catch-22. A couple of Kaufman's friends had shown up with a grinning preppy in a Brooks Brothers shirt. The brash fireplug of a boy declared he was going to take LSD for the first time and write a psychology paper about it. Kaufman's eyebrows went up. She'd heard of Jan Wenner before. Her parents, wealthy Jewish liberals from Palo Alto, were acquainted with his mother, Sim Wenner, whose racy dime novel Kaufman had furtively thumbed through as a teenager back in 1961. Kaufman also knew a society girl, the daughter of a British diplomat who lost her virginity to a notorious Jan Wenner. I was like, this is that guy, she recalled. We were sitting next to each other and he started talking about LSD. For his class, Wenner had checked out library books about psychedelics, including The Psychedelic Experience, a manual based on the Tibetan Book of the Dead by Timothy Leary. The chemical compound, lysergic acid diethylamide, discovered in 1938 by Swedish chemist Albert Hoffman, was still legal in California, but not for long. In the preceding months, people had been returning with tales of wild experiences with Ken Kesey, the author of One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, whose playful social experiment in a garishly painted 1939 International Harvester school bus was already taking shape on a ranch in nearby La Honda. LSD-25, Kesey's acolytes reported, plunged the user into a state of euphoric revelation, the unconscious mind emerging from the depths like a lost kingdom. In his 1968 bestseller, The Electric Kool-Aid Acid Test, Tom Wolfe would quote a woman who inadvertently drank electrified Kool-Aid at an early Grateful Dead show. I stood close to the band and let the vibrations engulf me. They started in my toes and every inch of me was quivering with them. They made a journey through my nervous system. I remember picturing myself as one of the charts we had studied in biology, which shows the nerve network, traveling each tiny path, finally reaching the top of my head where they exploded in glorious patterns of color and line. Wolf would portray Kaufman, who joined Kesey's Merry Pranksters that summer, as Mary Microgram, and so Ms. Microgram had to laugh at Wenner's absurd proposal. Well, you're not going to be able to write that paper, she explained to Wenner. He would need a guide, she said. How about you? Wenner flirted. On the way to his apartment on Carlton Street, they stopped by a dormitory in a friend's house to borrow a kitten and a stack of LPs, including a modal folk guitar album by Sandy Bull called Inventions. When they got to Wenner's apartment, the living room was littered with beer bottles from a sorority party he'd thrown the night before. We went into his room, and he took this acid, Kaufman recalled. We were just talking, and the kitten was playing, and then the acid started to come on. I had the Sandy Bull music on, and he was like, Take that off, I can't stand it. Freaking out, Wenner opened his closet door, stepped inside, closed the door, and stood by himself in a laundry basket full of starch shirts. And I said, that's fine. If you need me, I'm here, said Kaufman. He was in there for a long time. 